Right, we've got to get back into this Reva's tent and speak to the other two guys because we spoke to the leader and we found out that he's got uh, this a, a fixation on this this church meeting, some sort of dance club. But yeah, I'll clear out the church the tent first before I speak to the girl about the crab man that I see is crawling around in the church. But I also got something else here, some kind of superstar. First, let's make it absolutely clear: no one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes it lion-esque pose with the mic kind of way you're not Gulamir, Le Million or De Jewis no you're a metaphorical superstar you bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it where some would say it doesn't belong law enforcement and I also got kingdom of conscience heartache is powerful but democracy is subtle Incrementally, you begin to notice a change in the weather, whether it snows, the flakes. When it snows, the flakes are softer when they stick to your worry-worn forehead. When it rains, the rain is warmer. Democracy is coming to the administra administrative region. The ideals of the Deloran humanism are reinstating themselves. How can they not? These are the ideas of the coalition and the moralist international. Those guys are signal blue and they are not only good, they are also powerful. What will it be like once their nuanced plans have been realised? We're picking up loads of these new thoughts. Alright then, let's go back inside. Wait there, I need logic. That's right, to pass a check in there I need logic. I had something that gave me two logic, didn't I? Oh, that's drama. Two logic hat. Yeah boy. And a shirt. Let's do it. Hi again. So uh how things going? Twenty-eight percent. Let's give it a shot. We passed it with 28%. Right, so a number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. I got bad news for you, Andre. Things don't add up. What things? His, he senses something is wrong. This isn't the making of a club. It's a tent full, full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. He points to the speaker. One speaker, they have one speaker. Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean friend? The other speaker, you only have one. It's a one speaker system. The monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction reproduction in a Nordic music. Other speaker, pfft. You have no headphones. Wouldn't a cell need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. That Nosefed is here for its active ingredient. What more do you want? The distilled water. Cornerstone of a clean lab. And all, and of all cellular based life, what's your point, Lawbringer? The ether is in the air, a useful solvent, good for an acting agent out of solution. Make up your mind, first it's sweat, then it's ether, he smiles nervously. There's no need for me to pile on anymore, is there? No shit, he sounds tired. In short, you try to use a police detective to set up a drugs lab. That's, he waves his hands. Come on, that's. Against the law. I meant to say, not true. So what are we going to do with you? What do you mean do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. The optimal way to go about this would be indifference. It begins by you telling him you don't care about any of this. Really? You tell me what's really going on and we work from there. I can be lenient. I don't really care. I just wanted to crack the case. Do what you want and I'll do what I, and I want to say this. I don't trust that. Do you think suggestions being truth? I want to tell I want to say this middle one. You tell me what's really going on and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. 
What do you mean lenient? Not calling back up and hauling you off to the pen for starters. Okay man, okay, he raises his hands. Things are just so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn the church into this wickedest club in each river shawl. Because we do. We totally do. We just need to turn it into a speed lab before. <laughs> to get our foot in the door. And why do you need me? Like I told you, spooky assholes moved in a while. I was getting all this stuff together a month ago. The place was empty and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky are they? No man, they're spooky alright. It's just that they would probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off too. I could feel I couldn't feel the love at all. You promised you'd be lenient. This is it, judgment time. Let's do this clean, no speed lab, just a club for anodic music. It wouldn't work without the lab. Do what you have to do to keep the club alive. I have to look into the spookier situation before I can decide what to do with you. Decide later. I think I would like to ask for a bribe. But. Hmm. I'm going to decide later because I might let them set up the club. We can continue on an amiable path, right? No more misunderstandings, no more lies, he nods, smiling cautiously. Before you go, is there anything else you need? That's it. Champion. Crack it. Next guy. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid? Good. He sounds like a um, Rick Mail. Skin shows through the holes in the speed freak's too large a sweater in front of him, an open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in a mock seriousness, and continues to fill it, fiddle with some gears. Tell me about the machines. Weird stuff, specialised. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Why has going into water gives off spy sign or some fucked up Samoran science sign? You know, the kind that goes headfirst into the supernatural. What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. It should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it though. The sickest? That is perhaps why it should be researched. It exists. Most of it doesn't exist, but there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Psionic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders, pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Sign. Gotta compare sign if we align. Interesting. I suck at socialising, man. Even now our sign synchronisation is way off, but I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange his tools. Why are you called Noid? He picks up some sort of widget. This hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? <laughs> yes, further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church, okay. A young man with a peroxide blonde hair hooked up to a Harmon Wowshi tape player nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a known smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous ev evangelical secret. Hardcore. Hardcore. Say nothing. Hardcore. Say nothing. Hardcore to the mega. Hardcore. Bada 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 All right. Here comes the night. <laughs> Solve the egghead puzzle. Could there have been a right way out of this garden of fork and paths? You think? This is hardcore. It's is it? hardcore! We're just gonna keep saying it's hardcore. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. This guy's a legend. Back to the hardcore! Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Internally coherent! All core! Alright! Yeah! He furrows his brows at his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in a very real air of stuffy tent. Hardcore! Ah! 
<laughs> he just came in his pants. He lets out an antagonized roar over the feeblish, obviously not too hardcore beat below. So hardcore. Is it though? <laughs> is it though? He stops dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. It is. What is it? I mean really. Feels like you should reply with the very pinnacle of idiocy here, so that things get totally transcendent, but you haven't gotten there yet, so you don't know what to say. I am the mic enforcer. I am the chick's checker. Yeah! We this is weird. Ha, hardcore, hardcore to the mega, internally coherent. I was wondering if he knew who killed the mercenary hung behind the wheel and rags. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Yeko Kata, the place to be. Yakota, the place Yeko to be. Yeko Kata, the hardcore place. Yeko Kata. True. Ha, hardcore, hardcore, internally co all core. All right, gotta get the people going. I'm the party boy. It's my job. Party boy. I'm a party boy. Track. Watch your back. I'm just gonna see if I can get anything out of him. It's hardcore. Skiver D. Vic True. Ha hardcore. Hardcore to internally co all core. All right. Yeah. Hardcore. The question is, what is the question? Right. So I said no, but seriously, I'm a little worried it isn't. That would have been good if I had asked you a question, but I didn't. Now it's just idiotic. But there was a question? The true! Ha! Hardcore! Hardcore! Internally coherent! All core! All right! Yeah! Ha! The question is, but there was no question. Hmm. The true! Hard! Full! Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Here comes the... The true! Hard! Hardcore! Yeah! You can't say yeah and some other random things all day long, but the track still doesn't sound all that hard to me. Spinning out lyrics since the day I was, and the amount of lyrics I got is against the law. Vic, true, ha, hardcore, yeah, lucky Erski. Right, I want to go all the way now and see if I've gained anything. Ha, hardcore, hardcore, internally, co all core, all right, hardcore. Is it though? I was just thinking that a moment one ago. One mind, one spirit. Right, I've got no idea what to do here. Hardcore, hardcore to the mega, internally coherent, all core, all hard. Is it though? What is it? I mean, really. The question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. Yeah, boy. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. The skin on your back is crawling for a second. You can't even hear the music anymore. There's Hawthorne Tree on Rue de St. Ghislaine, right next to the canal. Don't be alarmed, everything's okay, he isn't actually worried, everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. You said you were worried, what do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it, I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like an anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last month and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? Hyper! He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right, it's not hyper hardcore. It's super hardcore. Fuck yeah, I knew it. He seems sure, but you are left with the nagging doubt that you might have overestimated the hardcoreness of the jam. Are you a thought reader? No nation but trans nation, no wars but class war. Does this mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic, of course he isn't. Jeremy in here just yells random things. Yeah, Revachol Imperative. Unless you were thinking Revachol Imperative right now, anyway. Lie, but I was thinking that. That's fucked up, man. Lying like that, and a cop too. So you're a thought reader, you're a communist. He's not a communist, that's just something he likes to yell. Best not to be a communist. Having extreme views on issues detrimental to understand on all sides. <laughs> 
Oh sure I can do that he nods, if you want that I can avoid taking a stand. Please don't turn him into a moralist. I'm making him into a moralist. I don't even know what to say to that. Be a moralist egghead, the balance needs your help. Don't be a moralist, wait, what am I saying? You should consider your choice carefully and rashly. Don't be a moralist, the path requires sensible ex examination of all nuances unattainable by most people. Ah, he yells, so, guess Egghead won't become a moralist after all. I want to make him into a moralist? <laughs> I made him a moralist! Ah, he yells, you guess Egghead is a moralist now. But we'll get in. It's time to compromise, he looks at you with an almost impossibly wide, shining, shining grin. Looking to see if you approve. Obviously, one shouldn't get too hasty with their decision making. Almost there. Could use a bit more something. Incremental change. Appropriate. <laughs> I'm swiftly moving towards a solution which pleases nobody. You feel Jermaine Egghead's smile is too enthusiastic, but it'll have to do for now. Is your real name Jermaine? The Cord Hardcore. Why are your lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs off for love. Why would lungs be for love? When Dolores Day was anointed innocence, her lungs started glowing through her body. For the word love, the world loved her and she loved it back, yeah. Oh yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. Love, he suddenly yells. The, word se the world seems to stop. In a woman's lungs, lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange damaged feeling grows on and on because I've never loved someone like you before. A dopamine surge accompanies the words. It feels like electricity flowing down your scalp, dissipating into your neck. Feels good, like a spark of life in that moribund, moribund sponge you call your body. See you later. Well, that was fucking riveting. <laughs> I've made someone a moralist. <laughs> I'm spreading my views upon the land. Like a true hero. A real hero. Now let's speak to this woman about the crab, even though I don't think it's real. So you talked to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. I can't see. I've got to ask questions first. Shoot. Your associate tried to use me to set up a drug lag. lab. I'm guessing you knew this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. She didn't appear surprised for what it's worth, which it isn't much. This is why I didn't go into the tent. The lieutenant looks at the ocean squint in his eyes. Typical delinquency. You don't get to choose your posse, they chose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine, and I tried to talk Andre out of it. Should have tried harder, misleading the cop is no joke. I don't care, I'm loco. I just wanted you to know that I know about the plan. Okay, but I still regret it. I should have been able to control them. And I will in the future, I promise. May I ask, what did you tell them? That I'm going to decide after I've looked into the church situation. All right, that's wise, she nods. Take your time. The others told me you went inside the church. What did you say in there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. Go ahead and tell me. Okay, she nods. I went in and saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was distressed like someone who's being raised by their grandmother, you know. Strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. Go on. And then you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall, upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out, end of story. Like a crab, you say? The lieutenant nods, his face is stone. What did this crab man look like? It was too dark, she shakes her head. I couldn't tell exactly. You were wrong. I do believe you. She raises a brow. Why? What would you stand to gain? Nothing, she says. Anyway, what else? Tell me about your associates. Haven't got much to say. What do you mean? You must know something about them. I don't tell people about my friends, who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. What about you? Tell me something about you. I'm a silver bird. I'll ask later. Get Asiel to talk about her associates. 
Tell me more about this music place. It's supposed to become like a club. The floorboards are twisting, blah blah blah. There will never be a club for anodic music here. Not in a million years. What is that dance music? You know. Cath cathodic music that's made with electronic instruments. Like what? Synthesizers, tape consoles, etc. Enough. Done. Right, so we're getting everything we can out of these people for now. Now, the thing is, right, it's getting late. Why did I want to go? What did I need to go back? Oh, I need to go to my room before 9 o'clock. Tell you what, I might take a run back to my room before we go any further. Because I want to try and fix the faucet. Oh, what, what, what? You see that seagull up there? Remind you of anybody? Kim? What, Kim? No, it's you. It's you. You and the seagull are just alike. Why am I a seagull? Think about the seagull story. It's one of endurance and adaption. The sideways. The seaside was paradise once. They were birds of that paradise. Then their paradise became shit city. And what did they do? They became urban survivors, eating burgers out of trash cans, killing and eating pigeons. No time for that sentimental bullshit. They hunt hustlers, getting shit done. They're one pair of track pants away from gangsters, just like you. Hold on. Have I ever eaten a burger out of the trash? Fucking right. Whatever it takes to survive, I am the seagull. <laughs> Own it. Steal hot dogs. Shit in the sand. Whatever it takes to keep going. That is me, baby. I'm just trying to see if there's anything back here. Nope. Can't go around the church. Right, I'm going to make a run back to... Back to the, the hotel. Because I want to fix the force because I'm not going back there any, any, any other time. Since I've got a free house here. And by the time I get into this church. It, I'll probably. Have so many conversations that it'll be, be well past nine o'clock. Rust colour water. Looking back is me. Come on, little feet. Take me home. And I also wonder if... I can get into this area. Where was it? Oh, look, I've missed this. Ah, it's a trap. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Look around. The reeds bend forlornly towards the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. Snow covers the broken stalks like a shroud. In the east, the city centre hums to you. The constant distant song, louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And then there's that cold again. Always the cold. Reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap. Confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid. Gorgon on them. Gorging on them. Big surprise, the lieutenant grins, mirthlessly. Anyway, one down, three to go. It'll be in the next one. Damn, I was hoping it'd be in the first one. No, you weren't. He looks at the sea, then you, laying the trap back down on the ground. So here, this is where I want to get in. Can I get in yet? No. I've got nearly 40 quid. Is there anything good I can buy? Oh, I'll tell you what is here. This shop here. And we got... Have we increased our perception? Or was it... It was something we increased. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep Composure. those clothes. Keep saving that economy.
The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. One hundred percent. Conceptualization. I've definitely got something else with conceptualization on, I remember. I'm already wearing it. The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% well, guaranteed. Again, to real. Doesn't matter. No, look. All you find is this lime colored cellophane visor. Turn to the lieutenant. Kim, are we. F are firefighters something we should be prepared for? Are firefights something we should be pre prepared for? I hope not. Plus one perception for a hat. Six dollars. Fuck that. Everything's still cool here, officer. Rhetoric. Persuade him to give you some money. <laughs> nah, you're alright, mate. I think I'm good. And we could also talk to God, couldn't we? Because we found that bird. Good, there's a couple of things we can do here. First I'm going to go up to my room, see if I can fix the tap. And then we'll come back down here. Oh, I could speak to her as well about her husband. Say we're just helping him with the traps. Right, I'm sure it's interfacing. <laughs> Fuck, where's me this? Interfacing. Let's try it. Yes. The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts back into place. You handle the carrot chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure, the faucet regains a recognisable shape, the steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters, everything is connected, everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to slowly cl clear slowly, without you having to wipe it. Well, we didn't really get anything for that, did we? Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. You never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. No, I really want to know. Reflexively, the lieutenant readies his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer, she starts. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near the tall sand of reeds. Quite tall, one many times my height, I remember. Then all of a sudden... Wait, where was this? And how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betan Court in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. She just started forming memories, real memories, not the billowy haze of infanthood. What happened? The strangest moment of my life, I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I'd never seen anything like it. She had no fear, just surprise. I didn't know how this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. She looks at you. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe? 
I left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if the reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. She chuckled. Of course she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. She brushes her hair back. Of course. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on our first date when I told him the story. You should have seen his face. His face. She smiles. He said my description matches the phasmid down to a T. It's white marble limbs, the way it moved. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. You were on a date? Yes. The limbs are white. Not all of them. But some of them. How big was it? Hard to say. But when you're quite small yourself. To me it seemed to be taller than I was then. But that's probably not the case. Maybe you imagined it. Of course, I've thought about it. But Morel says my report matches with the others. And I'm sure you hadn't heard of the phasmid as a child. Nor had my mother or my grandmother. So how do I know what to imagine? It was only when I started telling my story to a teenager that the boys would tell me, Lena, she lowers her voice, imitating a boy. You trying to tell us you saw the insulin and phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here, she smiles. They just gave me cider and ruffled my hair and tell me to stop dreaming, but I saw it. Kim, what do you think? I thought it was a wonderful story. <laughs> Conclude. Nice. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it. Whenever I get one, it was just, she sighs, such an, an impossible sunshiny day so warm. As she could get up and walk, right into the reeds on her own, into the mud, anyway, I ran into your husband. The old woman clasped her hands together over her blanket. Goodness, how is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? He's fine, Mom. As we had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. Now he's just finishing up some work. Oh, yes, that's my morel. He's bound to catch a cold, staying out there for so long. But I'm so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting this old woman's heart at ease even a little. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Our heart won't rest until Morella's safely back with her. Okay. Well, what we, what we should do is... My first point, port of call when I get back over there is finding the traps so we can send him home so he's safe. And then we'll do the church, but I want to speak to God. Can I help you? God, I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? The man takes the stuffed bird. It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. I want to apologise for breaking the great score by bringing you a rough, a rough grouse. Okay. He inspects the birds somewhat suspiciously. Their mellows. Okay. Well, this is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Nice. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. He hesitates. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. People don't just know how to accept gifts, especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. This was mostly about the fucking cardio. Massive cardio here. You'll live till 90. Or you'll get heart attack from running. <laughs> I feel good about our work here today. The lieutenant nods. It's all about the little things. Like bringing random people stuffed animals. God, I need to sing karaoke now. Not yet. Not yet. This could go amazingly well or amazingly... I'm going to sing it though. Fuck it. Let's go all out balls to the wall. Hey, was there something you needed? I need to sing karaoke. No, you don't. It's not happening. Yeah, but look him in the eye. Johnny Law is about to tear it up sad style. This is my way of apologising for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. Fuck it. It's part of my quest of self-discovery, help me. Yeah, but look at my eye. Johnny Law is about to tear it up sad style. The Whirlin doesn't need more sad style. That's one of the styles it can do without right now. It's my part of self-discovery. Help me. The Whirlin's not a charity. Fuck it. Why do you even have a PA system if 
you're not going to use it. It's for that he begins confidently, but then he stumbles on his own world. It's for no one, it's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. So what happened? A lot of people got killed because some asshole wanted to sing a karaoke. It's not a prop, it's for your client, I know it's used. Okay, yes, it's for some clients, he admits redu reluctantly. I'm a real client, I've paid my bills, and I have the right to use this karaoke machine. Ha, well, he comes up with a counter-argument. We don't have any tapes, they all got stolen. It's alright, baby, I've brought my song with me. Give him the take. Give him the tape. Smallest church in St. Saints. Oh my god, we're going to do it. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown it hard. Fine, fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Get out my hair. He shakes the tape at you. I plunge it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I am having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh yeah, time to do the damage. Let's fuck shit up, baby. Wait there, wait there, wait there. This stage is all set up for your performance. Feel silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady, suddenly. Oh, I want to drama it. So are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Look around the room first. The bar is full and buzzing with the chatter. No one is paying you any attention, but still you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay. Now a couple is looking at you even worse. You're sweating. They're going to hate you. This feels right, you belong here. I need... What was it? What was it that I needed? Drama. I don't actually think I've got anything. I boost drama, you know. Come on, baby, I need this. I need this in my life. Oh, the bow tie, of course. Right. I need this in my life, lads. I have to pass this check. This is what my soul desires. Put your lips against the microphone, test it. Immediately a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? Does someone feel like throwing up? I do a little. Look, King. Kim, I'm going to sing karaoke. <laughs> I can see that. The lieutenant steps away from the stage, ready for your performance. Low 8%? Fucking bastard. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done the hand thing. I'm just going to sing into it. I'm going to blast it out like a motherfucker. Watch this. Do it. Oh, you bastard. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. A lump in your throat suddenly. Oh, he sings it anyway. Oh, he's choked. I would often go there. <laughs> Hold on. To the tiny church there. The smallest church in San Sun Now it once was larger <laughs> How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Towards the Seven sisters Towards those pale cliffs there 
I would often stay there In the tiny yard there I have been so glad here Looking forward to the past here But now you are all alone None of this matters at all. <laughs> That was fucking amazing that was amazing. Task completed. I would often go there to the tiny church there, the smallest church in San Sienes, Saint Sienes, though it was once larger. How the real me rest there, down through the mist there, towards the Seven Sisters, towards the Pale Cliffs there. I would often stay there, in the tiny yard there. I've been so glad here, looking forward to the past here, but now you're alone. None of this matters at all. Do you hear that? It's the most pathetic applause in the world, Harry. Made of pity, no one liked you. I'm up here singing my fucking heart out. It's good enough for you, fuckers. You hear or think you hear an uncomfortable shifting around. A bit of laughter, maybe. No one's saying anything. Um, I'm going to unplug the mic now, okay? You don't know what good singing is. This is real singing. I sang about real stuff. That's it, I'm unplugging it. He presses the top of the carousel. You hear a little whine of feedback and then the mic dies in your hand. Continue. That's it. You're unpowered. Let's go, officer. The lieutenant closes the north. These people wouldn't know a good performance if it bit them in the arse. Cheers, Kim. You've got my back. You liked it? Detective Dubois. He bows lightly. It was downright tragic. Now let's go. <laughs> he thinks. <laughs> to him, being a cop in the RCM was truly expressed in that performance. Right now, I am going to save it. Because I think that's the route I want to take. Just the absolutely tragic one. But I'm really interested to see. What happens if I pass the check. I think we owe it to ourselves to find out. Come on. Let's pass this check and see if we actually sing it properly. I want to see both renditions. Or maybe it's exactly the same. Just to get a different audience reception. <laughs> this game is the best game I've ever played hands down. Ah, I fucking feel it again. Come on, baby. I want the perfect rendition. Yes, let's see what it's like. The air is thick with, with anticipation. Here we go. I would often go there to the tiny church there. What a voice. The smallest church in San San. Have you noticed it's the reptilian voice? Though it once was larger. How the real may rest there. Down through the mist there. Toward the Seven Sisters. Toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there. In their tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. 
But now, you are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters at all. That was fucking beautiful. That was B E A beautiful. So it's the same, same words. Continue. Yeah. Yes. Bow before me. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as awesome awareness of your body returns you. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. That's right, because that's what the voice I was using. I want to dedicate this song to whoever wrote me that fucking letter. I still love you. Thank you very much, asshole. <laughs> I dedicate this song to my partner, Kim. I dedicate this song to Gort. Dedicate this song to the RCM. I don't want to dedicate this song to anyone. I performed it for myself. I did. I performed it for myself, no one else. Boom. The microphone amplifies your voice in an uncomfortable manner. Someone coughs. Most people have gone back to talking now. Good, good. The cafeteria manager intervenes to cut the moment short. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. Last words? Thank you, Martinez. That was phenomenal. That was... Oh, yes. Get my dick hard, son. I'm going with that. That was the best rendition I've ever heard. Now, there's something else that's been bugging me, which I'm going to experiment with now, since we're... Well, the only thing we're really going to get done this episode is walk back across the, the bridge and go look at the traps, but... I'm really interested if actually putting up my interface and allows me the ability to lockpick, because this has always been locked, and I can't see another way of getting into it. So... I've already got it saved. I'm just going to blast loads of points into the interface and I'll only put two in really. Now, does it, he lockpick this? No. I don't know. I don't know how to open them. Them things with grey outlines. I really don't. Unless you do need specific keys. And then, well, who knows? Who knows? What I'm going to do is, before I do head back across the bridge, I want to check out my, my case files. Is there anything I need to do over this side of the water? i still got to locate a working firearm. Ruby. Check land's end. Boardwalk and the island. I need a thing to do that to her. I might just do it. The two signatures. I need to do that as well. Far north of the fell building. Fell building. West of the fell building. Okay. You know what it is? I'm probably going to get them signatures and post it off now. I'm going to do that because I should have really done that first since we're over this side anyway. Because I want to go and complete that quest for, you know, the fat guy. Actually, we'll do it in another episode. I want to find the traps. That's what I want to do. Ideally, I'd like to send him home today before it gets dark. Aha, money!
Oh, well, that's the door. I've been in there. Have I been back here though? Oh, that's the, oh, that's the homeless men. A new box. Oh, it's locked. Right, we've got to find the Feld building, then head west. Maybe here? Did I end up going in here or not? That's the Feld building, so west is this way. This section of the course hadn't been used in decades. Oh, they went home. Look, they've gone. Look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite now sway and tremble while the snow falls all around. The late art gets the colder remnant of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out, you feel strange somehow. Reach for the trap. The trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoologist beast inside. Another empty trap. The lieutenant takes a note. More out of a habit than duty. Let's keep going. The next one's a lucky one. So where have they gone? So wait there, where was it? The trap in Land's End, far northeast of the Feld building. Northeast. So I must be going the right way. Maybe it's it's behind the church. Come on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head. I'm gonna keep heading up. What is this and this? Are they traps? These rusty gear used to turn the whole machine. The building before you housed the engine. Must have been a big one. This is for pulling the boats in. Who knows where these chains go? The barrel has been recently discarded. Smells of fuel oil. Rhetoric and minus empathy. Which one's this? This will be the one far north, isn't it? Oh, this is Land's End. It's not too hot to spot once you know what to look for. Look around. The reed shakes sa sadly in the coastal breeze. Snow specks the stalks. Most of it melts quickly, relinquishing form to darkness. Reach for the trap. Nothing but locusts. Empty as all of them, he pants. One more of these and we're done. I must stress, I did not expect a cryptos on. <laughs> Bummer it wasn't here. I am pretty gutted. So which one am I missing? Near the boathouses. I don't think I've found the boathouses yet, have I? I haven't found the fisherman village either. Cigarette butts. You take a mental note. Geomotiri seems important somehow. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. It's too rusty to climb. Oh, a new tie. 
tiny inlet there, off in the far distance where the post trail tower. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban deterioration, a bottle and a dilapidated old comms tower. The wind picks up. Blah blah blah. I don't see it, Lieutenant. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit someone there. He looks east over the coast in the whirling in rags. Yeah, maybe the assailant climbed the tower. It's not possible to climb that ladder, even if it were. Why? There's no platform to aim from. He looks like he's cold out here by the tip of the coast. The jacket is warm, but not in this weather. Kim, you look cold. Maybe a thicker coat? I'm okay. You on the other hand. You look like you're about to turn into a popsicle. You're right, I should look into this situation before I die of hypothermia. That seems smart. Maybe the campfire was used by the perpetrator. To warm his hands before pulling the trigger, perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The course is spec with fires this time of year, he looks around. Truthfully, it seems like a very poor choice. What about the cigarette butts? Those? He points at them. A smoking assailant who favours Teo Motiri to Astra or Druin. Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for old men. Still, you felt it was important enough to make a mental note. That means something. You didn't pay attention to any of the other cigarette butts on the coast. Look over the water to the Wilner Rags. There, 1.2 kilometer, kilometers over the water of the bay, through a thick snowstorm melting flake by flake in the waves, you see the smallest rectangle barely visible. It's late. There's no light on the third floor of the Wilner Rags. No shape moves behind it. Plasture must be out of the town. Smoke and drink and being happy and elated without you, because you're here, freezing in the wind, aren't you? The relay tower coordinates bore traffic in the bay. Barely. So where's this other trap? West of the Feld building. I thought I'd already been west. Maybe it's in the back of here, do you think? I can see that thing looks like a trap, doesn't it? That there. Oh, I can't get up as well, I can just walk up. Oh, that's a phone, I don't want the phone. The railing. Someone's left an unidentifiable article, article of clothing on the railing. It smells really bad. Touch it. The cloth, if you can call it that, makes a soft crunching sound as you thrust your finger into it. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that it might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on the beach to dry out. Unfortunately, it just seems to have stiffened in the shapeless mass. Is this the old fishing village? Please tell me you're not taking that with you. I think it's the jacket the idiot Doom Spiral guy wanted me to find. The lieutenant looks at the sink and rag and sniffs. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to have it returned. <laughs> Can I wear that? No. Right, wait there, let me put these clothes on. Just because we might have something else that happens. Nope. Just because for some reason with some clothes you get your you get like options. Ah, wrong wrong one. That'll do. Right. So did I not take it? 
Oh, there we go, man. I didn't pick it up. Take all. Oh, it's not a jacket I can wear. Use interact button in inventory to inspect the item. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. How did it get so disgusting? It's a sordid and filthy tail, enough for the week. Are you sure you can stomach it? Think about it. It occurs to you that you, you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jet stream and seagull shit that en en ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Okay, what's the crust made of? Somehow it was carried over, carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. Okay, that's pretty disgusting. I've had enough. Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. <laughs> right. Damage morale. Fantastic. Why did I fondle the jacket? The shit jacket again. I just love touching stuff. That's what I do, son. <laughs> I like touching shit. Ooh, some new glasses. Plus two encyclopedia. Minus four perception. There must be jam jaws. A coin operated waiting machine. Hasn't been used hasn't been used for a decade. Vagrants have recently painted the top red. Water drips from it. Locked. A makeshift roof. So this is how we get over west. A big wine canister. Moonshine probably. Now who is this? The smell, it's awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. What is it? Don't you recognise it? The hideous pung pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness, only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach, fear. Kim. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Careful there, these floorboards look rotten and weak. Right, tell you what. I think that is a good place to save the game. <laughs> I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger. Right, when we come back next episode, we're going to investigate this. That's either a dead body or a person that smells of death. I'm thinking it might even be Somebody mentioned a woman. Oh no, but that woman woman was supposed to be in the church, the old like dilapidated one. I'll find out what's in this bin and what this is. That looks like a one of those binoculars that you used to see out. And also the thing is, right? I still need to find out how to get truly west to find that last trap. But we'll do that in the next one. See you there, lads. <laughs>